Hi, I'm Lisa LaRose, and I am a Vancouver comic creator, and I'm here with VanCap Online interviewing other fellow comic creators. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Johnny Christmas. I'm a fellow Vancouver comic book creator. And you've done a lot of projects. Um, how long have you been doing comics? Uh, professionally since, uh, well, full-time professionally since 2013, and I got my first comics out in the world seen in a professionalist, uh, profession, professional-ish um, context around 2009, but I've been drawing comics ever since I was in high yeah. school, elementary school, like my whole life, basically. What, is there a project that was kind of a turning point for you, where you got noticed, uh, or like an agent, or... Uh, yeah, so the, the first thing that, that got me uh, noticed, I guess, is uh, when uh, me and Ed uh, Brisson did Sheltered. I did the art on that, Ed wrote it, and, um, and it was our first uh, image, or my first image series. And, um, and uh, that, was a, that was the first time that I, I did something that, that more people, like people who weren't my friends, actually, got to see it and were commenting on it. So that was, that was a really big learning curve. And, uh, and really exciting. And then from then on, um, I've been kind of doing more projects and, and getting more stuff out into the world and more exposure and I have an agent now and, and all of that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, you did a comic with Margaret Atwood. I did. What was that like? Can you talk about that project? Sure. Uh, the project is called uh, Angel Catbird and it was a uh, sci-fi humor comic that was in the vein of, I, I think of it in the vein of golden age superhero comics so it's um fun and quirky and um it was a, it was a really fun project i'd never done humor before so it was uh it was it was a really fun entryway and working with margaret was great she's um so smart and so uh uh giving as a creator in terms of uh, playing with ideas back and forth and um yeah just uh it was a really great experience and, and really uh instructive in and a lot of the professional side of, of being a creative person. And Firebug is, that's also like pretty brand new, right? Okay. Uh, it, it started coming out at, as installments in Island Magazine, uh, published by Image Comics. And, um, but then when uh, Island went away, they wanted to know if I wanted to take the um, installments that hadn't been published yet and make a graphic novel. So I went back in and rewrote some stuff and redrew some stuff to make it read as one cohesive um, piece. Uh, before, I kind of wanted them to be released as these kind of interesting tone, tone poems because I knew they were going to be released months apart. So that way they didn't, um, and, I, and I wasn't sure when it was going to be collected. So I didn't want it to depend too much on memory um, from those installments. But then when it was going to come out as a, graphic novel, then it definitely had to be a lot more cohesive. So I had to go back in and uh, tweak things and, and, and make it uh, one unit, um, which I think the work uh, was stronger because of. Um, and yeah, released in uh, March 2018. Uh, and uh, I love it. It, it was, it's one of my uh, babies. It's the first uh, book that I've done uh, professionally that I wrote and drew at the same time. So yeah. it's, it's very, um, very scary, but also very, um, uh, rewarding and yeah it, it, I, I still can remember like certain pages I mean it happens with a lot of copies I can remember what I was doing on on when I flipped to a certain page on that particular day but with uh, Firebug I remember all the layers of revision and I remember uh, uh, you know things that came in late and I had to go back in and like kind of tweak things and try to make it um, make it into what it became yeah it was a great experience Cool. Daunting, but, but great. Daunting. So was it hard to like be a writer on a project? Are you mostly doing the artwork for most projects, I'm guessing? Uh, when I, well, right now I've, I've switched over to, I think most of the stuff I'm doing now is writing on projects. Oh, cool. Um, but but uh, more stuff that I'm writing and drawing together will be coming out soon. Oh, um, excellent. What's your favorite part of the process? Are you enjoying writing more? Um, Talk a bit about kind of like what you do and what you like doing and parts you hate and all that. Uh, I would say what do I enjoy most in the process? I would, I would, 
you know, I'm going to go even smaller than like writing or drawing. I'm going to go right down to inking. Inking oh, is yeah. my favorite part of the process. It's, you get into a, it's a part of the process where you can find yourself in a flow state more often, where uh, you're just like sort of in it and you're executing and you've done all this work and all this planning and all of um, this forethought, but then it all comes down to the day. And, and, and it's very freeing because you can let go of all of your the anxiety of is this going to work is it's not going to work or like you've got ink on the brush and it's go time you know so it's really it's a really freeing um part of the process it's almost the exact opposite of writing where there's so much um work that goes into um building up your story and and revising and revising and drafting and and seeing if things work and having other people read it and and considering it and putting it in a show and like, you know, in a drawer for a little while and not looking at it and coming back and pulling it out and looking at it again, you know, there's a, and then on the total other, other side of it, you've got inking where you just like, you just lay it down. Um, yeah. So I would say inking, but i really, really enjoyed the writing part of it also because um, for those very same reasons of getting to um, think about the work a lot more and, and, and having the work evolve over time. Like you'll, um, like a lot of times with me, um, I'll find that I, I start with a, a concept of something I think I want to say. And then through the discovery of, of creating the work, I, I, I finally have a piece of written material. And I find that what this material says is different than what I intended to say. So it's, um, so all of a sudden now um, the work has sort of decided what it's going to say instead of me imposing my will on it, which is a very wonderfully surprising thing, especially when you spend hours working on something, when something is decided that it's, it's saying something else, something that sometimes even a surprise to the writer. So um, I, I love that part of it, of, of writing and creating comics in general. You ink traditionally then? I do, yeah. Cool. It's... Uh, I, I thumbnail digitally and then okay. I will, um, sometimes I'll pencil a little bit digitally, um, like 50, 50 digital pencils, but inking is so, it's like my treat. It's my reward at the end of, of the long process. So, uh, so I've tried inking digitally before and you know, it's, it's cool. It, like it's, it's cool, but I like I like the the sense of risk and danger of you might spill ink or you might make a real big boo boo and you might have to come back at, or or um, sometimes you make a mistake and find that through the process of trying to fix it on the page that you come up with it doesn't happen often but you, sometimes you'll come up with a solution that's even better than the solution you had in mind and you're like oh that's how I'm gonna approach that character's hair from now on. Oh, that's kind of cool how that works. And then you go back in and, you know, so, um, yeah, traditional inking. Awesome. What is something outside of comics that you're interested in and does this show up in your work at all? I'll give you two. Uh, music is a big one. Uh, I like the, um, I, don't, I don't know if a musicality appears in my work, like uh, maybe there's a sense during certain characters in a work, I'll try to give um, that character their own sense of poetry in the way they speak. Like some people are very blunt and some people have a more lyrical sense to how they speak. And sometimes I'll listen to pieces of music to get inspiration on, on meter and, you know, um, of how the, how the piece is moving and also in the process. Like I think a lot about um, when I'm working collaboratively, I think a lot about jazz musicians and how you have a theme. Like this is, we're gonna sing, you know, or we're gonna perform Embraceable You or whatever. And then everyone gets to um, have their say, right? They get to solo on the piece or it gets to move in a different way. Like the letterer might decide to do something that you hadn't expected or the uh, um, colorist, if you're working on a, on a big team, might decide to do something else with the artist or, or the writer, you know. Um, so I think a lot about music and, 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 uh, and the art of collaboration. Uh, and the other one I would say is history. I, I love history. I've always been a, like a history nerd ever since I was a kid. So uh, a lot of times I find my work uh, 
sometimes a character will start uh, reciting a history of blah blah blah, and and uh, and sometimes it's you know it's useful in terms of storytelling if you want to um, have a scene of exposition that you don't have. Um, you know, real estate is limited in comics. You know, you don't have as much room as a novel, so sometimes you have to just have to have a bit of exposition and, and, a, and a history of blah, blah, blah is a quick way to do it. But sometimes it comes about really naturally. Like sometimes a certain character will just be a history buff as well and, and, and love the mythology of the particular world that you're creating or the events. Or, and, and sometimes it comes off as a history of, and other times it just comes off as gossip. You know, someone's kind of, um, and that's another fun way of getting history and exposition in is through gossip. Someone's just kind of, well, did you hear about yada, yada? And that, that's, that's one way that, I, that my love of history gets into my work from time to time. What is one thing you hope people take away from reading your work? I, I want the work to stay with them after they close the cover. Um, even better if they go back to it and flip it open and start reading the work again. Um, I, obviously, I'd prefer if they love it, but if they hate it, but they find it compelling, I like that too. I'll take that too. Like I, I just want them to. Uh, I want it to stick with people, even if it, um, even if they want to push it away. Like I've, I've had a. I don't know if you've had this experience where you'll hear a song or you'll have a see a movie or some piece of art, and you are convinced that you you hate it. You know, you hate it so if, <laughs> so much that you're effusive about it. Like you tell all your friends about it. And, uh, what, what a you know. Oh, I hated that movie. Blah blah. blah. And you find that you're talking about that thing over and over again because it, it stayed with you. Something about it is your brain's trying to work you know, like a problem or something. Um, and you will find that you go back and you rewatch it or you go back and you re-listen to it or you, you like it's, a, it's, a, it's an unresolved, it's unresolved within you. Like it, it shook something loose. And, um, and that, that's one thing I, I would, like I said, I prefer that it shakes something loose in a very enjoyable way and people love it, but it's, I, I would, it's more important to me that I shake something loose. I definitely have one of those. Like, I'm not going to say the name of it. I'll, get, I'll, get, in, I'll get into it after the recording. I'll tell you okay. about it. But like, there's this one book and I'm just like, why? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, or... yeah, people remembering and, and people reacting to your work in a like a strong way. Yeah. Yeah, that's really but, cool. Yeah, like I've, I've had um, some reviews that were on the face of it, like um, on the face of the review, very negative. Um, I had this one guy who gave me this, this um, really negative review, but it was a really close reading. It was, it was, I was so... Um, it was one of my favorite reviews I ever got because he'd read so closely and thought so deeply about it. And he had real reasons as to why he didn't take to that particular work. Um, Cause he actually assimilated it, thought about it. He was coming from, um, he was a religious fellow and he, he was coming from it through his own um, religious um, tradition and, and his view of it. So a lot of his um, objections were through that lens more so than his own personal it felt like but the fact that he read so closely led me to believe that he read it more than once and uh and thought about it and and made a very thoughtful review which i thought was very um was kind of cool is there a bit of advice uh you want to give new comic creators starting out a uh, bit of advice uh it depends what they want uh, is how I would tailor the advice. But I, I would say if you, um, the thing that I like about comics and, and the thing that I, that, that made me go all in on it, um, even as a teenager was that, uh, that the power of um, the work that you create is all within you. Like there's, it's not like you need a, it's not like you need a, a, a team of 10 other people to make a, a football team or something to, to, to win the championship. Like all you need is um, just enough solitude, you know, a brush, uh, you know, and, and determination. Like it's, 
it's really a um it's not it's not like a marathon or anything but like there it, it's um it's all down to you you know you can you can create the greatest work ever or you could create the worst work ever but it's all up to you and no one um can stop you or or um or put you off of it if it's what you really really want and if you're if you have a hunger for it that's like if you're out, if your hunger is outsized and you will not stop and you are relentless um you i'm not saying you'll be alan moore or whatever but something will happen you know like you're gonna you're gonna create stuff and if and the next thing you create if you're attacking it the same way is going to be better than or at least different than the thing that you your first work and then the next work is going to be even more so so it's like uh creating uh, keeping that same energy every time you you approach it and and respect for the form and respect for yourself and respect for um uh for your reader it's, it's within you i was uh uh master class has that you know they had that uh that special where two for one or whatever so i got together with a buddy of mine i was like hey you want to get in on this so we got the master class got big trucks going on down on main street um and uh so i started listening to the david mamet uh creative writing one right because uh i enjoy his um his use of dialogue and his thoughts on on writing and he had this whole thing about um he had this special uh safe and it had a special key and a yada yada and he, and he lost the key and he had to get a, a locksmith to come in there and like break the safe so the the locksmith comes and he uh he checks out the safe he checks out the room and he's like no one's broken in here like the key's in this room and david mammoth's like no way man it's not in here whatever so the guy's like i'm not gonna break into the safe the key's in the room so david mammoth goes goes shuffles through everything rifles through everything and he finds the key and the metaphor that he uses is that uh that's how it is with writing and 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 i'll say that for comics creating in general like the keys in the room like the the answer to the problem is is within you so that's what i would say to to anyone starting out cool and where can people go to find your comics find you online follow you uh, my website, uh, which needs to be updated, <laughs> apologies all, uh, is johnnychristmas.com, Johnny with an I-E. Uh, I'm on Twitter at underscore, J, no, J underscore Xmas, at uh, J underscore Xmas. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Johnny Christmas, and Instagram, Johnny Xmas. Um, but yeah, I'm around. Hopefully we'll be seeing you in person next year at VanCaf. Absolutely. I, I hope so, too. Good talking to you, Lisa. Thanks yeah. for, for having me on. And, and thanks for everyone who's watching this video. Have a great Bank Online. <laughs> Bye.